In this video, we'll explore how you can use Gemma AI models to handle customer emails. Let's go. Hey folks, welcome to Build with Google AI, where we explore how you can build practical solutions with Google AI technology. Managing customer emails is a challenging task for many businesses, and it can quickly get overwhelming. OK. OK. Stop! One of the key problems in handling customer emails is figuring out what your customers want, so you can figure out more details, give them a quote, or suggest other products. A few of my colleagues thought we could apply AI to this problem, so they tuned a Gemma model to help handle customer emails. With AI assisting you, managing your business emails can be a piece of cake. No, not yet. This project uses a Gemma AI model for processing email requests to a fictional bakery, and includes a web interface to make it easier to use the model. Here's a quick demo of the project. This Python-based web application is backed by an independently hosted Gemma model that extracts the relevant details from the customer requests and puts them in a structured data format. You put the text of an email from a customer in this first input field. For this example, I've loaded up this email asking about a birthday cake. Start the data extraction process by selecting the Get Data button. Behind the scenes, this application takes the email text, adds some additional instructions, and then sends a prompt to the locally running Gemma model. The model locates the relevant details of the request, including item type, flavor, filling, and puts those details into a JSON format. Here's what that format looks like. You can use this copy button to put the structured data in your clipboard, so you can use it in another application. There are a couple of things that I really like about this AI application. The first is that it's pretty simple to set up and use. This version of the application isn't even using a specially trained version of Gemma. It's just using the base instruction tune Gemma 2 model and some very simple prompt instructions. The other thing I like about this application is that the customer inquiry data is kept isolated. This whole application is running on a single virtual machine and no data is being transmitted to third-party services. Now, if you want to use this application with an existing order processing system, you'll need the data output to be in a specific format. I'll show you how to do that later in the video. However, before we get to that, let's talk to the developers of this project and have them explain how it works. All right, I'm joined today by the key contributors of the Byte project, Ravine Kumar from the Google DeepMind team, and Alyssa Bandy from the Google AI Developer Relations team. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it, Joe. All right, so my first question is, is this really worth the effort? I mean, dealing with emails is pretty tedious, but does AI actually really make it any easier? Well, one thing was that it was pretty easy to get started. We just took a Gemma model right out of the box, and we prompted it, and it was returning reasonable results just to start out with. Very low effort, took about 10 minutes on AI Studio to check it out. From there, then, we wanted to see what the effort would be to make it more reliable in some of these more complex circumstances. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't too challenging there either. You know. We had to create some data examples and whatnot, but about half an afternoon later, uh, we were getting pretty reliable results. So for something that you have to do day in and day out, you know, getting all these emails and needing to process them to understand what customers want, this actually could end up being a huge time saver for less than a day's worth of effort. All right, so next question. How does the Byte app actually work? So Byte is built using Python and Flask, and it's a web application. So when you open the application, you can input your user's email text into the text box, or you can upload it using a text file and press the Process button to package up the text itself with a prompt and send that to Gemma. Mm -hmm. Now, Gemma, the cool thing about it is that you're running it on a server that you have. Um, you're not sending it to a third-party source, so your customer's email data is not being read by someone else. Mm -hmm. And you can run Gemma either on your own machine or using a cloud service. But so Gemma will take your prompt and it will return a response. In this case, it's a structured data, including like all of the things that your customer has included. Like, I want this kind of cake. Okay, cake type chocolate, et cetera, for example. And it'll take that structured data, and it'll print it out in the application in a text box that you can easily copy and paste from. OK, so next question. If I want to extend this project, how do I go about doing that? Well, the first and easiest thing to do is just change the prompt. Think about what you want the model to do differently and just tell it. Often that'll work, but if it doesn't, then it's time to go to fine tuning. Mm -hmm. You're probably finding cases that if your business has 
some really specialized output need, like a very complicated structure, or it has terminology that isn't very common in, let's say, the general internet, you might need to train the model on how to uh, respond correctly in these scenarios or in your scenario. So in that case, you'll have to use the fine tuning notebook that um, is part of this tutorial, where you'll provide some data examples of what some input output pairs look like, and then train the model to respond appropriately when it sees that sort of input. Okay, so last question. What do you hope folks get out of this project? Well, I hope bakeries use it to process their orders. I love cake. Everyone loves cake. More cake is better. I also really hope that other businesses see the value in this kind of approach and they adapt it to their business needs. It's applicable for a wide variety of businesses, like florists can use it to process their orders. If, if you have more of like a client invoice, you could also use it for that. But I really hope that other businesses can see that it's actually really simple to set this up and smaller to medium sized businesses can use it to be even more successful. All right, well, thanks so much for being here and helping me out with this sweet project. No problem, Joe. <laughs> Least we could do. It's coding time. Let's look at how you can extend this project to create your own AI-powered email handler with Gemma. Don't worry about taking notes. There's a detailed tutorial linked in the description. Here's the code for this project. This folder contains the code for tuning the Gemma model for our email processing task. And this folder contains the code for running the web application. The simplest way to extend the Byte app is to modify the prompt instructions that guide the AI model on how to handle the email data. You can modify these instructions in this app code file in the get prompt function. Let's add an instruction to emphasize that the response should include just the JSON code with no additional markdown formatting. Now the model should respond with JSON code and nothing else. You can make this prompt a lot more elaborate and specify the format of the JSON code you want, including the field names. That approach is the fastest way to adapt the Gemma model's output to your business systems. I recommend trying that before tuning the Gemma model to see if you can get the results you want. Another way to modify the project is to fine tune the Gemma model for the task you want it to perform. The code for tuning the model is located in the model tuning folder. This tuning project is set up to generate an instruction tuned version of Gemma using the low rank adapter or LoRa tuning method. This part of the project includes a data set with request and response pairs showing the email inquiries for an Indian bakery and the data that should be extracted from those inquiries in a specific JSON format. To extend the model for your application, you'll need to track down or create a data set for your intended task with about 10 records to start with. A little more data is generally better, but you'll want to make sure it isn't repetitive. It should have a good amount of variety in it. The data we use for our example bakery application is in this data folder of the project as JSON files. This code loads and prepares the data for the model tuning process. And this method runs the whole tuning process, including loading the data and generating new model weights. Let's get the tuning process started with the tune model script. You should run this tuning process on a computer that has a graphics processing unit, GPU hardware, or a tensor processing unit, TPU, with sufficient memory to hold the existing model plus the tuning data. To run the tuning configuration in this project, you'll need at least 16 gigabytes of GPU memory and about the same amount of regular RAM. See the tutorial link below for more details on requirements and setup. And now we'll speed up this process through the magic of editing. Great. Now we have some new weights for this Gemma model. This tuning process generates multiple weights, but we only need one of these. So we'll pick the last one, which has a pretty good accuracy rate. You don't want the accuracy rate to be too high because the model can overfit the training data and get worse at handling new data. Let's copy this set of weights over to the application using the deploy weight script.
Now let's try out the new weights by enabling them in the Gemma module, and then restarting the application. Right, let's fast forward this a bit and check the output of the newly tuned model. Nice. What I like about this application of Gemma is that you can get it functioning quickly and gradually improve it with additional work. Try adjusting it first by changing the prompt instructions, and then if you want to improve the output even more, tune the Gemma model with your own data and run the app with your generated model weights. All right, let's wrap this up. And that's all the time I have to tell you about this AI-powered customer inquiry project. Thanks to my guests, Ravine Kumar and Alyssa Bandy for building and sharing this project. Links to the code and a detailed tutorial on how to extend the Byte app are in the description. If you get some new functionality working, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. I really hope this video helps you build your own AI powered tool for handling business tasks and helps you be more successful shipping cake, pastries, or whatever your customers need. So keep learning, keep building, make something great. We'll see you again soon.